Hello everyone, this is Jean-Michel for OSIA. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can playback video, synchronize video content, and apply shader effects on all sorts of visual stuff in OSIA score. So, how does that work? To get started, one must start to use um, SCORE's video pipeline, and that is done through a device. So, what kinds of devices are available? To know that, right click here and press add device. Here you'll see a little video tab. On it there is window, which is a viewport on which video content is being output, camera input, and we are currently working on an NDI add-on, spoot and siphon input and output, extra, extra, connect to. But for today we are going to work with just the window device. You can give it a name here, we'll just keep the default. And when you open it, you'll see that this creates a viewport here. On the device, you have some properties which allow um, changing, for instance, where is um, where the thing is shown, uh, what is the uh, size of the viewport, etc., etc. If it's in full screen, uh, you can leave full screen by double clicking and uh, enter it again by double clicking too. Um, all right, but now what we want is to put some video content inside that viewport. So to do that, we will first go look for some videos to put. So on my computer, I just have them on my library. I can click on the third tab here, use the library and go inside my videos folder on which I have some videos that come from various free packs from the internet. So thanks to uh, people who made them. And yeah, let's take, for instance, this one. To add it in the score, you just have to drag it and drop it. This also works, for instance, from the uh, Explorer, Finder, or whatever you use. And most formats are supported. In particular, you'll generally want to use HAP video as it's much better for your CPU and it's much easier to scrub HAP video than, uh, let's say, MP4 or things like that. So if I hit play, what happens? Well, nothing. Why? Because we haven't told score, okay, this video is playing back on this window. How do we do that? See this little white dot here is a port, so I click on it and here I can say, okay, you are going to render inside the window. Okay, and here when I hit play, you can see that the video is going to render. All right, so now if I do some, uh, let's say, VJ stuff, I'm likely going to want things to loop for a bit right now. If I hit play, it will just go here and then stop when we reach the end. Another video could play, which could be useful for, for, for instance, for stage work or plays, things like that. But sometimes we want to, you know, work on something and uh, tweak effects to like that, uh, things like that. So to do that, um, it is enough to click on the state, the little dot at the end here, and add the trigger. Trigger means that uh, this will keep running for as long as, um, as long as nothing happens. And if we don't make anything happen, then nothing will happen. And um, then videos by default, if you click on the video here, you'll see that here the loop toggle is enabled by default because that, that's what we want most of the time. So now how can I apply some effects on my video? It's very simple. I'll just go back to the process tab here, this con tab inside GFX. And here you'll see a lot of effects. So in filter, it's all the effects that take one image as input and produce one image as output. And all of these effects are ISF, interactive shader format effects, a format developed by Vidvox. Um, which we could integrate in SCORE. And uh, thanks to them, they also provide a nice library of uh, built-in presets. So for instance, I can take, uh, so I, you can preview what the effects are going to do. So here I will take, for instance, this one, which allows to adjust the color levels of a video and drag and drop it to the, the, the interval here. Once that is done, I need to say, okay, my video's output is going to go inside my shader's input. And this is done by selecting the port here and drag and dropping 
here. One thing that we have to do is say, okay, my uh, video, no, it isn't what is going to be rendered on the viewport. No, it's my shader, which is going to be rendered. And if I hit play, uh, now I can, for instance, start adjusting stuff. So for instance, like this, as you can see, it's changed the background of the video. Um, so yeah. So let's say I set some things here. And now with uh, this slider, I can have funky video effects. Uh, let's say like that. Okay. So now what if I want to give some movement to my effect? Well, for instance, what I can do is add an LFO low frequency oscillator process, drag and drop it here. And okay, let's connect it to that. And now you'll see that the, the filter is going to move. So for instance, uh, we can have things that move much faster, things like that. So like this, you, you can, for instance, so this will uh, follow the tempo. Uh, so you can have rhythmically motivated effects and um, synchronize things with, say, a drum sound, etc. etc. Um, now, what if I wanted to, say, blend together multiple uh, video effects? So what I could do, for instance, is take um, a, a simple shape, let's say a spiral. So, and inside the generator folder here, you'll see that there are various shapes available. So um, spiral is cool. So I, I'm going to add it here. And one thing is we're going to switch to the graph view because it starts, there starts to be quite a lot of things in here and it's, it, will, it will be much more comfortable to edit. So to do that, I double click here. Um, here I go select uh, this little toggle and now I see all the processes in a kind of uh, nodal patch. So here you have some controls, etc. Et and uh, yeah, now what I want to do is to blend my um, video content with the spiral. So if I say to my spiral, okay, output on the window, where is it? Uh -uh then nothing happens. Now, what I want is to blend it so that uh, things start to happen. So there are various blending uh, shaders also provided by um, Vidvox. Uh, so a very simple blending shader is Multiply. Multiply takes two inputs and just multiplies each pixels uh, together. So if I do that, now you'll see my spiral appearing. And um, yeah, so I'll just remove the output here. And here, now I can change the parameters of my spiral. So if I want a perfect blend with multiply, I should right click and I will put 0 0.5. And this way it's perfectly a perfect blend. And now I can start having uh, things that happen here. And I can use my LFO to change things here too. Uh, if I do it too much, it's going to be hard on the eye. Okay. So here it can give some pretty trippy effects. And yeah. Now, um, what if I wanted to uh, play back another video on another viewport? Well, it's very simple. I just need to go back here. I will add a second viewport, a device. Uh, let's give it another name, Win2. And, um, okay, let's take... Um, so if I drop a video on the same interval here, then uh, both videos will have perfectly synchronized startup and um, and so as you can see well both things play together and yeah but i could also say um, that instead i want to um, uh, to, to to not have them synchronized and uh, so let's remove that and let's add one here for instance 
Okay, and now, for instance, here, if I put a trigger at the beginning and I say, okay, you will start here, then things will start whenever I tell them to start. So here, for instance, uh, when I press uh, the trigger, but this could be some MIDI control or something else that will trigger the start of the video. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please come and ask us on either the forum or the chat. We'll be super happy to help you make your scores in OSIA. And thanks for watching. This was Jean-Michel.